Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be talking about how to make your Minecraft server private and only allow your friends to join it. I'm also going to be talking about privacy on Minecraft servers as a general rule and like what you need to know about privacy on Minecraft servers and all of that. It's going to be in depth in this video. So first off, I want to talk about making a Minecraft server private in the regards of hosting it, right? What kind of hosting is private? What kind of hosting isn't private? So there's two kinds of Minecraft hosting. There's what we call self-hosting, which is where you host the server yourself on your own computer. And there's what we call remote hosting, which is where you host a server on a remote host that is like Apex Minecraft hosting, MC Pro hosting, other Minecraft hosting companies that are out there, all that stuff. It's like using one of those companies, right? So those are the two kind of hosting, self-hosting and remote hosting. When you're self-hosting, you can expose your IP, meaning anyone who, you know, plays on your server and you give your IP out to can join your server, but they can also see where you lived under your Latitude and Longitude coordinates because all that information is available via your IP. And then on top of that, they can also DDoS you, which means hit you offline and basically make your internet really slow. It's a very, very annoying. On top of that, self-hosting requires you to own the hardware and you to host the hardware, make sure the hardware is good enough to keep running. It, it makes sure, you know, you have to make sure your internet's good enough to support the server, which is not always the case. It's kind of, you know, one of those things where you're taking all the risk and getting all of the, you know, chores of running a Minecraft server. Then there is remote hosting, which is inherently more safer because security is worried about by the remote host. For example, Apex is constantly making sure their servers are secure. They also have DDoS protection, meaning that, you know, DDoSing that could happen to you on your self-hosting server is not possible on Apex Minecraft hosting because they have DDoS measures in place to stop DDoSes before they even happen. Also on a remote host, they worry about the, you know, different kind of lag and things like that. They also worry about the hardware, which kind of goes in hand with the lag. And they worry about, of course, security. Like I said, that's such a big thing. They worry about it. You don't have to worry about the security, assuming, you know, other than keeping your account on their website private via using a good password. So who do we recommend for remote hosting? Well, we actually love, trust, and use ourselves for our remote hosting, Apex Minecraft hosting. You can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown, .xyz slash Apex. And again, at Apex, they handle the security, they handle the DDoS, and it's super easy on Apex to make sure that your friends can just, just your friends can join your server. It's actually the same method for that on remote servers and self-hosted servers. So that is very, very simple to do on Apex, literally one one command and it's done. Overall, we love and trust Apex so much that, like I said, we host our own server, playedoutbreakdowncraft.com on them, and they are the place that we recommend everyone host their server. They have great hardware, great security, great DDoS protection, and you will absolutely love it. So you can check out Apex, the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your remote hosting set up and up and running. You can also transfer your world from like your local computer to Apex very, very easily and start playing on it at Apex. Nevertheless, what if though you don't want to get a remote host or you already have one or you just want to self-host and make it to where only your friends can join it if your IP does get leaked, it is what it is, and you just want to make sure that your friends can only join. Let's go ahead and do that. So we go ahead and transition into this view. We have two Minecraft clients open. This is one account. This is another account. They're separate usernames. One's Nick's Games. One is the Nick King account. And then we have our Minecraft 1.17 vanilla server up here. So right now, either of these accounts can join this server. So let's go ahead and show you that. So if we click on multiplayer, we direct connect just to our local IP address here because these are local hosted servers. We will join right on in. So as you can see, Nick's Games has joined. We come over here on this other account and we direct connect right on in. We will see that Nick King has joined. There it is. Nick King has joined. Now, what if we just want one of these accounts to join? Well, in that case, we're going to go to our server console or if you're opt in game, you can do this in game and we're going to type whitelist and then on, right? So whitelist on. And again, I'll show you what that command was. It was whitelist on. So slash whitelist on on in game. If you're opt, you can do this, hit enter, and it's going to go ahead and turn the whitelist on. Now, when you do that, anyone who's opt can join or anyone who you add to the whitelist. For example, I don't believe the Nick King account is opt on this server. So if we go ahead and direct connect, it's not going to let us through. Oh, it looks like, yeah, there we go. You are not whitelisted on this server. It doesn't let us through because we're not whitelisted. Meanwhile, if we go ahead and de-op, so if we de-op this account, we'll be able to see that when we try to join with this account, it's going to say the same thing. We are not whitelisted. We can't join. However, if we come over here to console and we go ahead and add ourselves to the whitelist, so we do whitelist, add, and then we're going to do Nick's games, enter that in. Now this account, Nick's games can join on in. What was that command? Oh, it didn't, let's see. Did I, did I mistype there? Looks like I did. Whitelist space add, and then Nick's games. Hit enter, boom, added to the whitelist. Now we should be able to join right on in. There we go. Sorry about that. So now again, that was whitelist and then add and then username. So if we go ahead and op myself, I can add people in game now that I'm an operator. So whitelist, and then we can add, 
right? And then whatever username we want there. So that's the command for whitelisting. Now at this point, if we go ahead and try to join via this other account, it's still not going to work. This other account is not whitelisted. They are not opt. They cannot join the server. So you are not whitelisted there. However, if we go ahead and whitelist them, so that was whitelist add and then the username, right? Like so, hit enter. They are now added to the whitelist and we can go ahead and join with this account. Now, let's say you let somebody onto your server and you weren't, you know, it wasn't someone you wanted on your server. It was an accidental username, whatever. You don't want them to join the server anymore. Well, you can remove people from the whitelist. So again, if we go ahead and do slash whitelist and then remove and then a username, in this case, we're going to do Nick King. That's going to remove this account. So now if we back out, we remove this account from the whitelist. We cannot join it anymore, right? It's going to try to connect and then it's going to fail right like so, right? So we can, it's never going to be able to join again until we come back over here and do whitelist add and then the username, which is Nick King, add him to the whitelist and now join right on in. So there you have it. That's how you can whitelist users, add, remove users from your whitelist. It's that simple, that easy, and overall, it's the easiest way to keep only your friends on your Minecraft server. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is DDoS. We did mention that more in depth in the beginning of this video, and it is something that I want to mention again. Now, Apex Minecraft Hosting has great DDoS protection, and honestly, it's something you'll never have to worry about until you get to huge, huge server numbers where you have people literally trying to ha like take malicious action specifically against your server. Luckily, there's a great solution for this, and that solution is TCP Shield. This is who we use at Breakdown Craft, and they're absolutely incredible. Now, this is going to cost you some money once you get your server to a certain amount of bandwidth. By the way, this is a lot of players, hundreds of players online at a time to reach this amount of bandwidth. Most people will be able to use this free cheer. As you can see, 20 to 30 player server, no problem, right? So that is an option as well if you want advanced DDoS protection. It's super simple to set up, and we actually have an in-depth guide on how to set up TCP Shield in this video. So that's going to make things more, you know, better and, and more DDoS protected for you, but you will need to take some other steps. Like at this point, you need to be a bigger server, 20 to 30 players to really justify it. And you're going to need a domain name for your server and things like that. One thing I do want to mention, last but not least, is Cracked Minecraft. Cracked Minecraft requires special security permissions, meaning you can't just rely on, you know, basically a vanilla Minecraft server to keep your server protected if it is cracked. We don't teach anything about cracked Minecraft servers here, period. That is a thing that we've said. And it's not because we, you know, hate cracked Minecraft, but we believe that people should purchase and pay for software. So with that, we don't support cracked Minecraft here. And because of that, we can't say more than that. Just be aware if you decide to host a cracked server, you are at a huge security disadvantage compared to uncracked servers. And it's something you need to keep in mind, right? So even bungee cord servers and things like that have additional security permission, like uh, things that you need to take into account. So make sure you do that. But nevertheless, that is how you can make a Minecraft server private. If you do have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content every single day of the week. My name is Nick and I'm out. Peace.